Hey guys, welcome to part 3 of my reference playlist. I was originally planning to make this bag for the Cheshire Cat Girl but I went in a different direction in the end with that project. But I still wanted to do this bag and thought it would be a good fit for this series as it's a solid base design that lends itself to be easily tweaked. So with that being said, let's get into it. Now, if you haven't seen the Cheshire Cat Girl video, I'll leave a link in all the relevant places. Because this was originally intended as an accessory for that project, I'll be using matching colours which are this bright pink and the darker pink. You can use any two colours for this project, so it's completely up to you. You'll also want some stitch markers and a 4 inch zip if you can find one. If not, you can get a 6 inch and cut it down. And of course a crochet hook. I'm using here a 4mm because that's just my favourite but it's up to you which size of hook that you use. Starting with one colour, I chose the lighter pink but it really makes no difference. Start by working three half double crochet into a magic ring. Then place a stitch marker in the first stitch. Pull up the working loop and attach the second colour then work another three half double crochet into the magic ring. Pulling up that working loop to end the round. So at this point you should have three stitches of each colour. For round two, starting again with the light pink in my case, work two half double crochet in each stitch from the previous round for a total of six stitches. Pull up a loop and switch to the darker pink and repeat what you did. So work another two half double crochet into each stitch. You should have 12 stitches in total by the end of the round. In round three, we're going to start increasing. Work one half double crochet into the first stitch, then work two half double crochet into the next stitch. Repeat this two more times for a total of nine stitches. Repeat the same thing on the darker pink side and after you've finished you should have an added total of 18 stitches. Increasing again in round 4, we're going to work one half double crochet in the first two stitches and then two half double crochet in the next stitch. Repeating that two more times for a total of 12 stitches.
Repeat this all again on the darker side and you should have 24 stitches for the entire round. By this point you can actually see we're just mirroring what we've done in the first stage. So it's we're carrying on with the circle but we're just using two colours. So you just have to bear in mind when you're counting your stitches that you're switching colours. Following the increase pattern for round five, work three half double crochet stitches into the first three stitches and two half double crochet into the fourth stitch. Repeating this twice more to complete the light pink section. Do it all again for the darker pink. And once you finish, you should have added 30 stitches in total. You can really see the spiral coming along. For the sixth round, increasing again, work four half double crochet and increase into the next stitch. You should have 18 stitches after you're done with the light pink section. Repeat again on the darker side for a total of 36 stitches. I'll do this off camera and meet you back at the start for round seven. For round seven, there are no more increases. So just half double crochet into each stitch as normal with the light pink. However, for the dark pink side, this will be slightly different. Switching to double crochet, go ahead and double crochet in the back loops only for every stitch until the end of the round with the darker pink. The double crochet just creates a bit of height and so will create a base for this bag. Finally, just repeat all of that one more time to get two of them. These will be the sides of the bag. At this point, you can go ahead and weave in the ends, but leave the working yarn still attached as we will be coming back to create a strap for the bag. Okay, so it's time for installing the zip. Grab your zip, turn it upside down, and with the right sides together, line up the zip with the light pink sections and whip stitch the zip onto both sides. I used invisible thread but you can use normal thread or colour match it to whatever matches your yarn. Because I'm using invisible thread it's a nightmare to work with so I'll finish this off camera and come back when I've completed both sides.
with both sides complete, turn everything inside out and using the working yarn that should still be attached, slip stitch both sides together. When you get to the end, it's time to make the strap. If you already weaved in all the ends, it's not a major problem, you can always just create the strap separately. I just don't like weaving in too many ends and prefer to limit this in every project as much as I possibly can. In any case, just chain as many as you need to match the length that you require for your strap and then double or half double crochet back down the chain to create the strap. You can also not have a strap if preferred and I do actually have a strapless version I use as a coin purse but I needed this strap to hang on to the amigurumi in, in this case so I'm having the strap in this case but it's perfectly serviceable not to have one. I mean, you don't have to have a strap, you can put an elastic on there so you can put it on your wrist or you can add a longer strap so you can put it around your neck, it's completely up to you, I mean, yeah, I, I, I use mine as a coin purse and put it in my bag, so yeah, the, the possibilities are endless, you do you. So like the other bag I did in part 2, I also added a snap closure to this one. The snap closure just makes it easier to put on and remove from the amigurumi when I want to, rather than having to shove everything through their massive heads. But anyway, just place the snaps on the opposite side of where you put the strap on, depending on if you carried on with the working yarn or not. And if you made the straps separately, you can of course add snaps to both sides to make this strap fully removable. So that's also another choice. With the strap finished, the bag is complete and part three of the Craft Cube Academy series is done. Of course, I had to add a Cheshire cat face, but it's completely optional. You don't have to do this, I just couldn't resist it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment and even consider subscribing if you like the content I create. Don't forget to hit that bell button to be notified whenever I upload a new video. And well, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.